Hi everyone, I am Jos Overstree and I'm back with another video. During my decades in the field, I often came across salesmen who never made an NPSH calculation in their entire career. Why should you? In this video, I will show you why you should always make an NPSH calculation when sizing a pump. In my career, I have had to answer many questions about the meaning of the word NPSH and its purpose when sizing a pump. NPSH stands for Net Positive Suction Head. In the pump industry, we normally work with two different NPSH values. You have the NPSHR and the NPSHA. The NPSHR stands for Net Positive Suction Head Required. And that is the minimum pressure required at the suction port of the pump according to pump tests made by the pump manufacturer. The NPSHR value is given in the pump curve. In this pump curve you see the NPSH curve of an impeller diameter 400 and for an impeller diameter 320. So you don't have to calculate the NPSHR required, it's already given in the pump curve made by the pump manufacturer. The other one, NPSH available, has to be calculated of the insulation of the pump insulation like you see here. And for the NPSH available calculation, we are only looking at the suction side of the pump. And now the million dollar question. Why should you always make an NPSH calculation? We do so to try to avoid damaging cavitation of your pump. Cavitation, what is it? I think you heard this buzzword a million times before. Cavitation is the implosion of vapor bubbles. The forces during the implosion of vapor bubbles can be between 1000 and 10,000 bar. It can destroy your pump within weeks and it will always destroy the weakest part in your pump. That can be your bearings, your mechanical seal, your impeller, but also the pump shaft. This impeller has an operation time of six months and here you see clearly the holes of cavitation damage. But also here this shaft has a diameter like this. This pump was only in operation for six months and here the weakest part was the pump shaft. So cavitation forces are very high. But why do we get cavitation? We get cavitation because of a pressure drop of the pump medium in the impeller. There is a suction pressure. The medium is coming in the impeller. It enters the impeller eye and it will leave the impeller from the discharge side of the impeller. I have an impeller here. This is the suction side of your impeller. Here you can see the impeller eye. This is the discharge side of the impeller where the medium is leaving the impeller. If I draw the pressure line on the suction side, it can go like this. It will go down. and it will go up again when the medium is leaving your impeller. In this case, this is the pressure, the suction pressure in your impeller, and this is the vapor pressure line. As long as the pressure in your suction stays above the vapor pressure line, there are no cavitation vapor bubbles are formed, so you don't have any cavitation. But also another thing can happen. 
if you have a suction pressure line like this suction I it's coming below the vapor pressure line then vapor bubbles are formed and you will get cavitation so we make an NPSH calculation to check if the NPSH available of the system is sufficient for the pump NPSH requirements so the NPSH required it's like checking the watts of a light bulb for the lamp to put in. I hope you learned something today. And if you want to learn more about NPSH calculation, we have an NPSH calculation for water e-learning course. You can find more information about this and all our other courses on our website. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you next time. Bye.